Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium Kim Sayet, director of the Smithsonian National Portrait Gallery. Good morning. My name is Kim Sayet, and it is my pleasure as director to welcome you to the National Portrait Gallery at the Smithsonian Institution. Every commissioned portrait involves four people. The first person is the sitter, who already has a larger-than-life persona and may understandably be rather curious to see how his or her likeness will be captured in perpetuity. In a spirit, then, of building anticipation, I bid a warm welcome to the 44th President of the United States, Barack Obama, and his wife, former First Lady Michelle Obama, who we honor today. The second person is the artist who tries in the face of public scrutiny to stay true to her or his own artistic style and still transmit a sense of their sitter's internal spirit to external audiences. In many ways, a much, as much a reflection of themselves as an insight into their subject, the portrait artist must remain unique and, to quote the poet Baudelaire, realize a character. In the spirit of that bravery, I am thrilled to welcome Kehinde Wiley and Amy Sherald into our collection. This museum had the pleasure of showing Kehinde's work in 2008 as part of the Hip Hop and Contemporary Portraiture Exhibition. And Amy Sherald we celebrated in 2016 when she became the first woman to, wear, to win our Outwin Buchiva Portrait Competition. Kehende and Amy are taking the best of portraiture traditions and adding a fresh layer by absorbing the influence of fashion, music, hip hop, pop culture and painterly inventiveness. Together, they are transmitting the energy of urban America into the contemplative spaces of high culture. And I, for one, am thrilled. The third person involved in making a commission is the patron. And as is tradition, we make an art match and then we raise private funds to do the work. I am extraordinarily grateful to all of those people across the country to whom we came for support and those who took a leadership role. Steven Spielberg and Kate Capshaw, Judith Kern and Kent Wheely, and Tom Pegas and Don Kaposha. Finally, it is the fourth person that is possibly the most important, you, the viewer, and generations to come. At the end of the day, the sitter, the artists, and even the donors will disappear, but it is the audience that will remain. Every portrait, no matter when it was created, is contemporary because it is completed when someone has a personal encounter in their time. Ultimately, these portraits will live to serve those millions of future visitors looking for a mentor, some inspiration, and a sense of community. Ironically, for this art museum, it's not what you look like that counts. It's what you do that matters. And through the skill of a talented artist providing a window into the life of a president and first lady, people learn history and their place in it, Set the course of human events in context, find empathy for others, and perhaps create a sense of connection that leaves them feeling a little less alone. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome to the podium, David Scorton, Secretary of the Smithsonian Institution. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on a very, very special day at the Smithsonian. President Obama, Mrs. Obama, Vice President Biden, Amy, Kehinde, Kim, Provost John Davis, Regents, Commissioners, and distinguished guests. 
It is an honor and privilege to share this morning with you. As you probably know, we have two occasions to celebrate today. First, in just a few moments, President and Mrs. Obama will unveil their official portraits. And second, today is Abraham Lincoln's birthday. What you may not know is that President Lincoln once credited a portrait with getting him elected. A photograph by the great Matthew Brady taken before Lincoln's famous speech at the Cooper Union in February 1860. For many Americans in 1860, this was the only Lincoln they knew. The Brady image appeared on the cover of Harper's Weekly, in newspapers across the country, and on buttons and leaflets throughout the campaign. Today, that photograph is on display here at the National Portrait Gallery. Lincoln may have given Brady too much credit. There were probably a few other reasons he won the presidency. For example, I hear he was a pretty good speaker. But his comment reflected something that was true back then and remains true more than a century and a half later. Presidential portraits have a particular power to capture the public imagination, to move people to think about America's leaders and indeed American society itself in new and unexpected ways. This is why the Portrait Gallery has been collecting presidential portraits for 50 years. And it's why we have expanded that collection to include our nation's first ladies. We are excited to continue both of those traditions today. And I want to stop for a moment and ask you to join me in recognize, recognizing the ongoing innovations of Portrait Gallery Director Kim Sayat and her magnificent colleagues who are continually reimagining ways in which the Portrait Gallery can inform and inspire the American public and beyond. Kim, congratulations. Now, if you think back just a little bit, you may remember another image that drew national attention just a couple of years ago. It captured a tender moment at the opening of the National Museum of African American History and Culture. Former President George W. Bush was embracing, or rather being embraced, by First Lady Michelle Obama. One headline called it, the hug felt around the country. I can only speculate as to what exactly made that image so moving to so many people. But when I look at that picture today, I can see clearly some of the many qualities that millions of Americans have admired and continue to admire in Michelle Obama for over a decade. Her warmth, her kindness, her ability to connect in real and meaningful ways with virtually everyone she encounters. As the first African-American woman to serve as First Lady, Michelle Obama blazed a trail for women and girls of color and inspired countless women and men and children across the United States and around the world. During her eight years in the White House, she was a tireless advocate for causes that transcend partisan politics fighting to end childhood obesity, encouraging young people to pursue higher education, supporting our service members and their families, and working to ensure that girls around the world can and will go to school. Even more impressive, she did all of this while raising two remarkable daughters and did it always with good humor and grace. Dear to my heart, Mrs. Obama also continues to be a devoted champion of the arts. And we need the arts so much in every day in our lives. As First Lady, she helped give African American artists a greater presence on the walls of the White House, a commitment that her selection of Amy Sherald to paint her portrait reflects, and one that we at the Smithsonian here are so proud to share. And now it is my honor and privilege 
to invite Mrs. Obama and Amy Sherald to unveil the portrait. Good morning, everyone. Let's just start by saying, wow, again. <laughs> Let me just take a minute. It's amazing. Wow. How are you all doing? <laughs> well, it is a pleasure and an honor to be here uh, in this beautiful museum with all of you today. Let me start, of course, by thanking uh, Secretary Scornton and Kim uh, Sayet for their remarks and for their outstanding leadership and everything they have done to support us, to support the arts uh, over these many, many years. Uh, I also want to recognize all of our dear friends and colleagues and our team members and our family who are here with us today. Too many to mention. Uh, Joe, and I know Jill's in traffic. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you all for being here. Uh, we love you. Hi, Mom. What's going on? What you think? It's pretty nice, isn't it? Um, I see so many people that I could thank, um, people who've been with us on this journey. Um, we love you all. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, I have to tell you that as I stand here today, uh, with all of you and look at this amazing portrait uh, that will hang among so many iconic figures, I am a little overwhelmed to say the least. Uh, I have so many thoughts and feelings rolling around inside of me now. Uh, I am humbled, I am honored, I'm proud, uh, but most of all I am so incredibly grateful to all of the people who came before me in this journey. Uh, the folks who built the foundation upon which I stand. Uh, as you may have guessed, I don't think there is anybody in my family who has ever had a portrait done, <laughs> let alone a portrait that will be hanging in the National Gallery, at least as far as I know, Mom. <laughs> uh, but all those folks who helped me be here today, they're with us physically and they are with us in spirit. Uh, I'm thinking about my grandparents, Rebecca and Purnell, Purnell Shields, Southside, as he is known now throughout the nation, uh, LaVon and Frazier Robinson, Jr. Uh, they were all intelligent, highly capable men and women. Uh, they have the kind of talent and work ethic that usually destines people for greatness but their dreams and aspirations were limited because of the color of their skin. I'm of course thinking about my dad, Frazier Robinson III, man who sacrificed everything to give me and my brother opportunities he never dreamed for himself. And of course I'm thinking about my mommy, Marion Robinson, who is sitting in the front row supporting us like she has always done always putting herself last on her list so that she could give me and Craig and our children everything that makes today possible. Uh, I'm also thinking about all of the young people, uh, particularly girls and girls of color, who in years ahead will come to this place and they will look up and they will see an image of someone who looks like them hanging on the wall 
of this great American institution. Yeah. And I know the kind of impact that will have on their lives because I was one of those girls. And when I think about those future generations and generations past, I think again, wow, wow. What an incredible journey we are on together in this country. We have come so far. Um, and yes, as we see today, we still have a lot more work to do but we have every reason to be hopeful and proud. And I am truly grateful to have had the opportunity to stand alongside my husband and play a very small part in that history and in that future. But I'm even more proud of the extraordinary woman and artist who made this portrait possible, Amy Cheryl. Not yet. I got more to say about you, girl. Now, Barack and I had the privilege of considering a number of outstanding portraitists. And I, I want to thank uh, Bill Allman, Thelma Golden, Michael Smith, our, our team. We love you guys. I know you're out there. Um, who guided us every step of the way. Oh, there you go. Of course, I could see you guys. But Thank you. They guided us through every step of the way uh, through this process. Uh, we never could have done this without you because you not only know your craft and all these folks, but you know us intimately. You knew what we were looking for and what we wanted to say. Uh, so thank you three, the dynamic trio. Um, and with their help, we narrowed down the field to a few key artists who Barack and I then interviewed. And each of these artists had to walk into the Oval Office, yikes. Uh, and I, I, I almost wanted to start off each conversation by apologizing for putting them through this process. I mean, just to get this job, they had to come to the White House, to the Oval Office, and get grilled by the President and First Lady. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm so sorry. So it wasn't lost on us how, how unnerving this experience was for each and every one of them. And when Amy uh, came in, and it was her turn, I, I have to admit that I was intrigued. I was intrigued before she walked into the room. I had seen her work, and I was blown away by the boldness of her colors and the uniqueness of her subject matter. Um, so I was wondering, who is this woman? And she's so cute, too. And then she walked in and she was fly and poised and I just wanted to stare at her for a minute. Uh, she had this lightness and freshness of personality. She was hip and cool in that totally expected, unexpected kind of way. Um, and within the first few sentences of our conversation, I knew she was the one for me and maybe it was the moment she came in and she looked at Barack and she said, well, Mr. President, I'm really excited to be here and I know I'm being considered for both portraits. She said, but Mrs. Obama, she physically turned to me <laughs> and she said, I'm really hoping that you and I can work together. <laughs> and after that, <laughs> She and I, we started talking and Barack kind of faded into the woodwork and, you know, uh, there was an instant connection, that kind of sister girl connection that I had with this woman and that was true all the way through the process, which is a good thing because when someone is doing your portrait, they spend hours staring at you. Yikes. Um, it's very intimate the experience so you really have to trust the person and feel comfortable enough to let yourself go um, and Amy made that possible for me uh, we had that connection so today I want to thank uh, Amy for being willing to put herself through this process um, especially after it was leaked I just felt for you girl you know to have to do that right to paint a portrait of Michelle and Barack Obama is like cooking Thanksgiving dinner for strangers. Everybody has an idea of what Thanksgiving dinner is supposed to taste like. 
the dressing that you love is the dressing you love. You don't want other stuff in it. And that's what it's like. People, people know what they feel and think and how they see us. So Amy had to interpret that and uh, do it under the spotlight. So I can only imagine that it's been a little stressful for her, but she has handled it with all, all with remarkable poise and grace, which I think tells you a lot about who she is. She is obviously a woman of extraordinary talent and it is thrilling to see her getting the recognition she deserves with all the awards and the calls from museums and buyers lining up to purchase her work. But even more important, Amy is a woman of extraordinary character and strength. Her path has been strewn with obstacle after obstacle. She's faced life-threatening medical conditions of her own. Uh, she's made tremendous sacrifices to care for the people she loves. Uh, she's endured the heartbreak of losing some of those that she's loved and all through it, she kept going. Uh, all along, she stayed faithful to her gifts she refused to give up on what she had to offer to the world. And as a result, she is well on her way to distinguishing herself as one of the great artists of her generation. Uh, it was a total joy. <laughs> it was a total joy to work with you, Amy. I am so pleased and honored uh, and proud of you. So it is my uh, honor to introduce Amy to all of you today, the woman who created this beautiful portrait, Amy Sherrill. Good morning. Thanks for being here so early. Um, Mrs. Obama, I want to begin by saying thank you. Thank you for seeing my vision and thank you for being a part of my vision. I paint American people and I tell American stories through the paintings I create. I find my models, I style them and I photograph them. I then use that photograph as a reference. My approach to portraiture is conceptual. Once my paintings are complete, the model no longer lives in that painting as themselves. I see something bigger, more symbolic, an archetype. So approaching the commission with you as the subject of this painting is deeply connected to what I hold as my truth. This portrait delivers the same kind of symbolism. Um, the dress chosen for this painting was designed by Millie. It has an abstract pattern that reminded me of the Dutch artist Piet Mondrian's geometric paintings. But Millie's design also resembles the inspired quilt masterpieces made by the women of Jeeves Ben, a small remote black community in Alabama where they compose quilts and geometries that transform clothes and fabric remnants into masterpieces. Photographer and historian uh, Deborah Willis wrote, you have engaged the imagination of a new generation of writers and artists as we chronicle the commanding role you played in American visual culture. Mrs. Obama, you are omnipresent in that way. You exist in our minds and our hearts in the way that you do because we can see ourselves in you. The act of Michelle Obama being her authentic self became a profound statement that engaged all of us. Because what you represent to this country is an ideal, a human being with integrity, intellect, confidence, and compassion. And the paintings I create aspire to express these attributes, a message of humanity. And I like to think that they hold the same possibilities of being read universally. So I will always be grateful for this enormous opportunity to work with you. Um, this experience has humbled, it has honored and informed me in ways that will stay with me forever. So thank you again for bringing light and clarity to my journey as a painter of American stories. And I truly consider today to be a defining milestone in my life's work.
And I just want to say, without crying, <laughs> a quick thank you to my mom for supporting me all the way through. Thank you, Mrs. Obama, and thank you, Amy. President Obama, I know of all people here, you are aware that your wife is a tough act to follow. <laughs> I hope, sir, that you're more prepared than I am. It's hard to believe, isn't it, that just 11 years have passed since Barack Obama launched his presidential campaign in Abraham Lincoln's hometown of Springfield, Illinois. In fact, it was 11 years ago this very week. Some of you might recall that when he addressed the crowd outside the old state capitol, he quoted a speech in which Lincoln observed the strange, discordant, and even hostile elements that America confronted in 1858. At the time of President Obama's inauguration, America again faced challenges that could be described in quite similar terms. A global economic crisis, wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, rapid technological progress and the rising uncertainty that came with that progress. And during a period of such profound change in the country and the world, President Obama provided the steady leadership that millions of Americans were seeking. He was a voice of calm in times of chaos. He was a voice of comfort in times of grief. And he was a voice of confidence at all times. Confidence in the resilience of the American people and the promise of a better future for all. In one important sense, President Obama's historic election was a departure from America's past, but he also embodied the ideals that define some of the other presidents portrayed in these halls. Lincoln's secular faith in our national union, Kennedy's commitment to public service, Reagan's optimism that America's best days are still to come. For these reasons and more, Barack Obama was a very consequential president. He will long be the subject of admiration and study and fascination. And when future generations look back at this presidency, I believe that Kehinde Wiley's portrait will give them a unique window in the way that only presidential portraits can, a window into both the man and the moment when he led with such distinction. And with that, please join me in inviting President Barack Obama and Kehinde Wiley to unveil the portrait. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, it is wonderful to see all of you. Uh, how about that? That was pretty sharp. It is my great honor to be here, and I want to thank Secretary Scorton and Kim for your outstanding leadership at uh, a couple of the crown jewels of uh, American life and your extraordinary stewardship. Uh, I want to 
thank everybody who was here. Uh, you know, Michelle and I are so grateful for the friends and family and uh, former staff and current staff uh, who have taken the time to, to be here and, and honor us in this way uh, and soak in the extraordinary uh, art that uh, we're seeing here. Uh, it, it, it means so much to us, and, and I hope you're aware of that. Um, we miss you guys. And <laughs> we miss you guys, and, and, uh, and we miss uh, the way those who worked with us uh, on this incredible journey uh, carried yourselves and worked so hard to make this country a better place. Um, Amy, I want to thank you for so spectacularly capturing the grace and beauty and intelligence and charm and hotness <laughs> of the woman that I love. Special shout out to my man Joe Biden. Uh, an even more special shout out to uh, my mother in law, who, in addition, who, in addition to providing the hotness genes. also uh, has been uh, such an extraordinary uh, rock and uh, foundation stone for our family. And we are so, so grateful to her. We love her so much. Um, like Michelle, uh, I have never had a portrait done of myself. I mean, the hope poster by uh, Shep was cool, but I didn't sit for it. Um, nobody in my family tree, as far as I can tell, had a portrait done. Um, I do have my uh, high school yearbook picture, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, is no great shakes. Um, and so when I heard that this was part of the tradition, I didn't quite know what to do. Michelle and I were somewhat confused. We were uh, lucky to have uh, some extraordinary friends uh, and people with exquisite taste, uh, Bill Ullman, Thelma Golden, and Michael Smith, uh, who gave us the assist and helped us to consider a whole range of artists. And uh, we had an immediate uh, connection with the two artists that are sitting here today. Um, I think it's fair to say that uh, Kehinde and I bonded, maybe not in the same way, this whole sister girl, you know, <laughs> thing. Um, I mean, we shook hands, we were yeah, we had a nice conversation. Um, he and I make different sartorial decisions. Um, but what we did find was that we had certain things in common. Uh, both of us had American mothers uh, who raised us extraordinary love and support. Both of us had African fathers who had been absent from our lives and uh, in some ways our journeys involved uh, searching for them and figuring out what that meant. Um, I ended up writing about that journey and channeling it into the work that I did because I cannot paint. Um, I'm sure that Kehinde's journey reflected uh, some of those feelings uh, in his art. But what I was always struck by when I, whenever I saw his portraits was the degree to which they challenged 
our conventional views of power and privilege. Um, and the way that he would take extraordinary care and precision and uh, vision in recognizing the beauty and the grace and the dignity of people who are so often invisible in our lives and put them on a grand stage, on a grand scale, uh, and, and force us to look and see them in ways that uh, so often they were not. Uh, the people that Michelle referred to, people in our families, people who helped to build this country, people who helped to build this capital, people who to this day uh, are making sure that this place is clean at night and serving food uh, and taking out the garbage and doing all the other stuff that makes this country work so often out of sight and out of mind. Uh, and Kahindi lifted them up uh, and gave them a platform uh, and said they belonged at the center of American life. Uh, and that uh, was something that moved me deeply because in my small way, that's part of what uh, I believe politics should be about, is not simply celebrating the high and the mighty and uh, expecting that the country unfolds from the top down, but rather that it comes from the bottom up. Families all across America who are who are working hard and doing their best and passing on uh, the wisdom and resilience uh, and stories uh, to their children in the hopes that their lives will be a little bit better. And so uh, I was extraordinarily excited about uh, working with Kehinde. Uh, and let's face it, uh, Kehinde relative to Amy was working at a disadvantage because his subject was less becoming. <laughs> Not as fly. <laughs> um, and and I want to I want to say that it was uh, although those uh, Michelle always used to joke uh, I am not somebody who's a great subject I don't like posing I get impatient I look at my watch I think this must be done one of those pictures must have worked why is this taking so long <laughs> um, so so it's it's pretty torturous uh, trying to just take a picture of me much less paint a portrait um, I will say that working with Kehende was a, a great joy. Um, and his, he and his team made it easy. Uh, Kehende, in, in the tradition of uh, a lot of great artists, uh, actually cared to hear how I thought about it uh, before doing exactly what he intended to do. I mean, there were a number of issues that we were trying to negotiate. Um, I tried to negotiate less gray hair. <laughs> and Kehende's artistic integrity would not allow him to do what I asked. I tried to negotiate smaller ears. <laughs> Struck out on that as well. Um, Maybe the one area where there were some concessions uh, was, as I said before, Kehende's art often takes ordinary people and, and elevates them, lifts them up, and, and puts them in these fairly elaborate settings. And so his initial impulse maybe in the work was to also elevate me and put me in these settings with you know, partridges and scepters and <laughs> thrones and shiffer robes and uh, <laughs> mounting me on 
horses. And I had to explain that I've got enough political problems without you making me look like Napoleon. We've got to bring it down just a touch. <laughs> and that's what he did. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's hard to obviously judge something that uh, is a portrait of you. Uh, but what I, I can say unequivocally uh, is that uh, I am in awe of Kehinde's gifts uh, and what he and Amy have given uh, to this country and to the world. And uh, we are both very grateful uh, to have been the subject of their attention for this brief moment. So, Mr. Kennedy Wiley. Yeah. So, how do you explain that a lot of that is just simply not true? <laughs> What is true is that this is an insane situation. To be able to stand on this stage and to look out at this crowd and to have this level of adrenaline flowing through my blood tells me that something special is going on. Um, my whole life is driven by chance. Uh, much of the work that I'm known for is just chance driven, complete strangers in the street. Um, trying to find people that uh, have a sense of grace, uh, some sort of je ne sais quoi, something that, that you feel will translate on a painting, on a, on a museum wall. It's something that you know when you see it, you don't quite know what it is. And people are minding their own business, trying to get to work often, and I'll tap them on the shoulder and I'll say, do you mind if I paint you? Most people say no. Uh, it's tough in the streets to to get people to recognize what the import or the gravity of art is. Uh, my job has been to slowly take these moments of chance and to try to weave them into something that means something in the language of art history. These big museums like this are dedicated to what we as a society hold most dear. Great curators, their jobs are to be the guardians of culture, to say this is what we as a people stand for. You know, growing up as a kid in South Central Los Angeles, going to the museums uh, in LA, uh, there weren't too many people who happened to look like me in those museums, on those walls. So as the years go on, and as I try to create my own type of work, uh, it had to do with correcting for some of that, uh, trying to find places where people who happen to look like me uh, do feel accepted or uh, do have the ability to express their state of grace on the grand narrative scale of museum space. Well, that, that sense and that obsession with chance has uh, gotten me here. In a very strange chance sense, uh, you, Mr. President, have found something in what I do, uh, what my purpose has been as a, as a creator, as a thinker, as a painter, to be able to project out into the world uh, this urge, this itch, this desire to, to, to see something corrected for. Uh, it's, it's, it seems silly, it's, it's colored paste, it's a hairy stick, you're nudging things into being, but it's not. I mean, this is consequential. This is who we as a society decide to celebrate. This is our humanity. This is our ability to say, I matter, I was here. Uh, the ability to be the first African-American painter and paint the first African-American president of the United States is absolutely overwhelming. Uh, 
It doesn't get any better than that. I, uh, I was humbled by this uh, invitation, but I was also inspired by uh, Barack Obama's personal story, that sense in which he and I both do have that echo of uh, single parents, uh, African fathers, that search for the father, that sense of twinning. Uh, there is kind of like this echo of he and I in that narrative. When you look at this painting, there's sure an amazingly handsome man seated in <laughs> the floor. But there's also um, botanicals that are going on there that nod towards his personal story. There's the chrysanthemum, uh, it's a sort of state flower of Chicago, uh, Illinois. There's uh, flowers that point towards Kenya. There's flowers that point towards Hawaii. In a very symbolic way, what I'm doing is charting his path on earth through those plants that sort of weave their way there's a fight going on between he and the foreground and then the plants that are sort of trying to announce themselves from underneath his feet. Who gets to be the star of the show, the story or the man who inhabits that story? Uh, it's all chance driven. And uh, Mr. President, I thank you for giving me a chance. And I thank you for giving this nation a chance to experience your splendor on a global scale. Thank you. I, it, you got it dead on. I was so uh, in this zone and talk about uh, uh, not recognizing the real source of the light. My mother, Freddie Mae Wiley, can you please stand? There is nothing I can say. This is really where it all starts. And um, we didn't have much, but she found a way to get paint and just the ability to, to, to well, shut up and breathe. <laughs> the ability to, to, to be able to picture something bigger than that piece of South Central LA that we were living in. You saw it. You did it. Thank you. Um. Congress founded the National Portrait Gallery to collect and display the portraits of those who have made a significant contribution to America's history and culture. This year marks our 50th anniversary, and as Secretary Scorton mentioned, today, February the 12th, marks President Lincoln's 209th birthday. I want to thank all of the Smithsonian, and especially the National Portrait Gallery staff for making today so special with particular appreciation to our chief curator, Brandon Brame Fortune, and curators, Taina Catagol and Dorothy Moss, who stewarded both commissions. <laughs> I sincerely hope that all of you here today will agree that the Portrait Gallery has an extraordinary mission to visualize the motto on the Great Seal of America, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. We hope that you continue to support our work, starting with this moment, by posting on social media using the hashtag <laughs> MyNPG. Don't hold back on your excited, celebratory, and awestruck praise, everybody. 
So I now invite President Mrs. Obama, Kehende Wiley, and Amy Sherald over to their portraits for two photographs. The first in front of the paintings with the artists, and the second with all of those on stage. Where do you want us? Yeah, in the front. Yes, in front of the pictures. So in closing, I want to leave you with some of President Lincoln's words to remind us that what we do in life, no matter who we are, counts. Every effect, said the President, must have its cause. The past is the cause of the present and the present will be the cause of the future. All these are links in the endless chain stretching from the finite to the infinite. Thank you, and thank you for being with us this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our program. Please remain seated as our distinguished guests depart through the G Street entrance. Members of the press only are invited to queue down the right-hand aisle of the courtyard for a photo of the artworks. Interview huddles will take place at the step and repeat at the back of the courtyard shortly. Broken down and tired of living life on the merry-go-round.